Like police literally pulled you over while you're doing your road test. Of course you have failed the test. Hello guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Helen Uwoshini and I am a YouTuber living in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you guys how I was able to um, get my driver's license here in Saskatchewan and pass my tests on the very first attempt. I would also be adding some tips that would help you if you were you know, in the process of getting your license or if you just wanted to know how the process works here in Saskatchewan. My experience will be shared based on the fact that I live here in Saskatchewan. I don't know how it happens in other provinces and I know that it works differently in each province so I can't really say how it would happen in Ontario or in Nova Scotia but I'm sure of how it happens here in Saskatchewan especially here in Regina. Okay guys so when I first landed Canada it was January 2020 and a few weeks after that the lockdown started so the SGI office was closed. The SGI office is Saskatchewan government insurance and they handle everything motor licensing, you know, registration, plate numbers, everything that's related to licensing. So normally when you land, you have a period of 90 days that you can drive with your um, international license, like your license from your home country. I came with my Nigerian license, so I was able to drive for a period of 90 days. Let me also just state here that it is important that you come with your Nigerian license or any license from your home country. If you do not come with that license, you will have to uh, register for driving school again from the beginning. That's if you intend to drive in Canada, but if you do not, that's fine. If you intend to drive in Canada, you would have to go to driving school again from the beginning. And that costs over $500. And guess what? You will just do six hours on the road and six hours in class training and you're paying over $500. That's a very high amount. Driving school in Lagos, is far 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 cheaper than that so i advise that you come with your driver's license i have a video where i talked about items you should bring when you're coming to canada you should check out that video as it would give you more insights on other items you need to bring so anyway fast forward to my time now because the sgi office was closed i couldn't go into you know book for my test that meant that my 90 day um, grace period was extended <laughs> so I was very excited because I was not even looking forward to doing the test I was very happy and so I'll drive around the town I'll drive to maybe not like anywhere serious anyway maybe just grocery shopping I'll drive to church I'll drive to drop my daughter at daycare nothing serious now a couple of months later the SGI office opened I knew that it was time to get serious <laughs> So I went in and I told them I wanted to do my test. Before this time, I had visited the SGI office and picked up a manual. So there's this manual that tells you about driving in Saskatchewan. The manual is free. You can pick it up at the SGI office or you can download it online. I think it's available on the SGI website as well. It's just a driver's handbook. So I had read that handbook like my life depended on it. I had gone back to back. It's actually a really small book. You can finish it in a couple of hours. So I had read that and in fact, I knew everything inside the book. <laughs> so I went in for the first part of the test. The driver's um, driving test examination here is divided into two parts. The first part is for um, the road test and the second part is the knowledge test. So you do the knowledge test first before you do the road test. So I went into book for my knowledge test and because like I said, I had read that manual, I knew everything in it, I was able to be confident with it. So for the knowledge test, it is divided again into two parts. The first part is where you have the signs of the road and the second part is where you now have, um, how do I call it, maybe scenario based questions like they would ask you if you were if you get to a four-way stop who goes first or how do you drive under certain weather conditions they are all multiple choice questions so they have answers you just need to pick the right answer and it's a computer based test so it's it's pretty easy the first part like i said is just signs and there are 30 questions i was able to answer all 30. that's to tell you guys that i had read i read i read those signs because so many of the signs were signs I have never seen before. I mean, I've been driving in Lagos for, I don't know how many years, several years, but 
I had never seen some of those signs, so I knew that I had to take it seriously. So I was able to do the science part, I passed. Then the other part as well, easy peasy, I had done several practice questions. Now on the SGI website, there's actually a page for practice questions. If you do those practice questions over and over again, you will be able to pass. This is another tip. <laughs> See, if you do that, um, if you take the practice question now, right? I think there are like 25 questions. By the time you try it again, you would notice that they are the same questions. They just reshuffle them. So let's say what you answered as number one the first time, you would probably now be answering it as number seven. Do you get? So it's like the same question. So if you have done the practice test like 10, 20, yes, I did it that. <laughs> I did it that many number of them. Like I did it that much. If you have done it 10, 20 times, you know all the answers so once you are ready once you have done it and you know all the answers you're good to go so that was easy peasy i went in and i booked and i passed it's 25 dollars for the knowledge test and if you fail it you will have to retake it and you'll pay that 25 dollars again for every test that you feel you would keep um retaking the test and you pay the money again so like i said that was pretty easy i moved on to the next step now the next step is the actual road test where you drive <laughs> with an examiner and the examiner would give you instructions and whatever you do will be accessed hmm. you guys math was beating like I, I wanted to fail like i was so afraid because i had heard stories i had heard people say they did it three times four times eight five times eight times i'm like ah <laughs> i knew i was in for it and i don't like driving normally even in lagos driving in lagos gives me anxiety <laughs> so i i'm not really a, uh, like I'd rather just take Uber or something, but I knew that there was no way I could escape this because I needed that license so because I knew that um, Driving in Downtown was different from driving Maybe to Walmart or whatever. I knew that I had to take it seriously So here in Regina there are two locations where the SGI is located The first one is in downtown and the other one is in the south location You could book any of these centers as your location for your test. I booked the downtown location now I'm even hearing that the south location is easier because um, It's more like a residential area. So you don't have a lot of people on like downtown where you have offices You have schools you have different things in downtown. There are always people passing there are pedestrians everywhere There are school buses. It's so busy. So if I had known I probably would have taken the south location but anyway I had already booked the um, downtown location and I was okay with it so what I did to just save myself face was I got a I got an instructor guys when I say this person knew his onions like I went I went for practice every I think I did three times so I did four times I practiced four times with him and it was like he was taking me through the routes that the examiner would literally take me I don't know these guys are good and I'll just advise here that if it's possible this guy an instructor you I don't I don't think you can really pass on your own if you have never driven under exam con condition in like a downtown area it's totally different when you're just driving to work and you're just coming back or it's different if you know you know how to drive Lagos Ivadon Expressway or Third Milan Bridge it's totally different you guys because what okay so first of all the um instructor was charging me or charged me fifty dollar for an hour and a half yeah fifty dollars so i did four lessons and that was like two hundred dollars it may sound like a lot but i'd rather pay two hundred dollars than <laughs> than keep doing the road test again <clears throat> excuse me so the road test is fifty five dollars and if you like I said if you fail you would have to retake it and you would pay that $55 again anyway so my instructor would come he would take me in the evenings after work take me through the routes teach me everything like he would say this is where your examiner will take you through I, I was like how do you know this and he's like he has done this thing for over 15 years you guys <laughs> so he knows all the rules <laughs> he knows all the rules in Regina so he would and he was very nice and very respectful like even if i was doing rubbish he won't even be you know he won't even be angry about it he'll just respectfully tell me oh madam next time you do it like this you know and stuff like that so that was how i was able to familiarize myself the very first day he took me on one street i just changed lane or i just drove into bicycle lane 
you guys if i had not gone through that instructor training class i would never have known that oh this was a bicycle lane do you get what i'm saying so there are small small things he would um or the instructor would tell you about that you didn't know were very important he also made me realize um some of the mistakes that can just make your exam go bad so like for example you're driving but you're not driving at the right speed and a pedestrian crosses in front of your car and you allow the pedestrian cross you have failed 10 points first of all the road test is over 100 so you're allowed to fail nine points right once you fail the 10th point you have to retake the exam so whatever you do do not fail more than nine points you don't do not lose more than nine points so that you do not have to retake the test so he would take me and he would tell me okay because i didn't um look at my mirror i have failed maybe i have lost four points or something like that you know so he was just literally telling me what to do he was just okay so let's just drive you know and he would give me instructions as an examiner would give me instructions so he would say something like um when it is safe make a left turn now when they say make a turn or maybe change lanes you're supposed to do like three things three things first of all you're supposed to um signal before you even signal you should have checked to be sure that it's even safe to signal right so you signal you check your mirrors and then you shoulder check that shoulder checking <laughs> at some point <laughs> i had turned to a government lizard just so shoulder checking is you actually turning your neck to look at the side that you're changing your lane to right so anytime you want to change lane you have to actually turn your neck i never did that in lagos <laughs> i didn't know there was anything like that so you see why it's, it's actually really necessary for you to get an instructor and i know you may have read the book you may have read the manual yes it's in the manual but it's different when you're actually practicing it so they'll tell you oh change your lane you have to um signal you have to look at your mirrors and then you actually turn your neck if you do not actually turn your neck you have lost points because you have gone when it was unsafe you know um, also when you get to a stop point you have to come to a total stop like a complete stop if you do a rolling stop so a rolling stop is you've not stopped fully you're just your tires are a bit still rolling so you have to come to a complete zero if you do not come to a complete zero you have lost 10 points can you imagine so whenever you see a stop sign you should like come to it like your car needs to do like this <laughs> okay i'm exaggerating but you need to come to a total stop so those were the kinds of little little things that my instructor was also letting me know then he taught me how to parallel park i don't know i think till tomorrow i don't understand the purpose of parallel parking but it is necessary so before what i would do is if i want to park um, in between two cars i would drive in and use my front to enter and then just reverse but with parallel parking i have to drive um beside the car that i would like to park behind i hope i'm clear and then i'll use my back like i'll use a reverse to enter the space between the two cars and then adjust and if i do that i should also ensure that i am one foot or one foot away from the curb if i'm parked too close to the curb that's also a crime so i would lose points for that actually with parallel parking you can repack during the test but you will lose i think four points or so so parallel parking you can try again and gets the correct if you get it the correct time you'll have lost four points the first time obviously but you cannot you're allowed to retry your parallel parking so he taught me parallel parking i had parallel park i started practicing parallel parking on my own um like i'll come home instead of me to park as i normally would park i would use my back to enter I'll do parallel parking i'll practice i'll practice sometimes i'll go and then like i said driving in downtown is totally different from driving in my neighborhood because downtown is so busy there are pedestrians everywhere you know first of all there's this thing about you can turn on you can turn on you can turn right at a red sign right but if you're about to do that right turn and there's a pedestrian that wants to cross you know that the pedestrian has the right of way as in the moment i'm like ah she really said we can turn right on, on, on the red lights right no you cannot do that you have to allow the pedestrian go first before you turn because the pedestrian has the right of way in that case or let's say you're driving and you get to an intersection and a pedestrian wants to cross and the pedestrian has not fully left the road he's on the other side though he's not on your side he's on the opposite side but his legs are still on the road you're not supposed to go i was just <laughs> i didn't know all these things though you guys so you have to wait for both legs of the pedestrian to get to the curb before you go if you go while the pedestrian is still on the road 
you have lost points as in you have lost 10 points anything pedestrian anything pedestrian in the road anything uh, pedestrian crossing in front of you you have lost 10 points even i've heard that if you're driving by the way do you guys know that here they don't use horn <laughs> so if you're driving and maybe you get to a green light or something and you are you're chilled you're, you're stopping or something and the car behind you just presses their horn you have lost points so you can see that there's so many things that are so in Nigeria, when in fact before the lights even turns green, <laughs> before the lights even turns green, the people at the back already are they already pressing their horns. Here, if somebody presses their horn because you do not move where you are supposed to move, you have lost points. Can you see that is so complex? But you would know this if you keep doing it over and over again. So, like I said, um, I at the first time when I went for the um, training with my instructor, he just looked at me and he said, "Okay, maybe I should just come." three times or two more times i didn't need so much training because like i said i have been driving for a while so uh, we did all the trainings he took me through all the routes and on the morning of the test i i was very scared you guys i was visibly shaking as at the time i did my own test um the the sgi office was just reopening so the lockdown was still you know they were not in full operation so they couldn't sit in the same car with me because of social distancing so they were driving in the car behind me so i in fact when i first heard that i was like ah so they asked me to come to um to the test but they would drive behind me anyway when i went that morning my instructor said i should come that morning so that he would just do a quick you know should i call it revision <laughs> like a final drive through just to make sure that i remember everything that we've learned so far so do you guys know that this man took me through a route like when i went for the test it was the same exact route that i had gone through that morning it was like it was really small for me to just tell the woman i know you're going to tell me to turn left now <laughs> like i knew the the same the same spot where I had parallel parked um, that morning while training was the same spot I parallel parked while doing the actual road test. Like between the same two cars, it was like, my God, <laughs> it, was, it was like, it was so crazy. I, I, I don't even know why I was not so afraid. I was so afraid that morning because I don't even know why. I was just pretty, pretty, extremely nervous, right? And my instructor was like, it's not that deep if you do not pass. Nobody's going to beat you like what's the worst that would happen? You would retain the test. So why are you shake like I was visibly shaking you guys? Because I had heard so many stories and I didn't want a situation whereby something would happen and I have to retake. And then it matter, like, even if you retake the test, so what? Like it's not even that deep. You know, and I had heard so many stories, you guys. I had heard stories where and this is why it's very important that when you're doing your test, you should calm down. You should relax if you're nervous it will show so i know of someone who was so afraid just like the way i was and she couldn't take the instructions that the examiner was giving her so like the examiner would say um when it is safe make your right turn but or maybe at the intersection make your right turn but because she's not calm she'll say oh i should make a turn did you say i should make a turn i should make a right turn and she would go through the intersection do you understand so she did carry out the instruction given to her and if you're not doing the instructions that the examiner is giving you obviously you're going to fail or i know somebody that literally beats the traffic lights <laughs> while doing their test under normal conditions that person would not have beat the traffic light of course everybody knows that at a red um light you would stop but because of fear or you know not being calm she literally went through and of course that is extremely in fact that kind of thing they would send you back to driving school because you're not safe to be on the road at all you do not understand the signs of the road or the rules of the road and you don't want that <laughs> so another um issue uh, that i heard another story that i heard <laughs> do you know that somebody was doing their test and i think maybe she was too you know when you're too maybe she was too confident i didn't even know <laughs> maybe she was too calm i didn't even know but she was just driving she was carrying away you know she was just happy and then before you she was racing <laughs> like she was she had beat she had gone over the speed limit it was so bad that the police started chasing her <laughs> and she didn't know so normally what happens is when when the police is trying to stop you they will not just start they will first start will come behind you and they'll start maybe blinking their lights flashing the lights she didn't even get the gist she was still going <laughs> she 
they're still going ah, and flashing like flashing like until they stated they had to put on the siren and unfortunately i realized that ah is it me that these people are trying to donate them pulled over like police literally pulled you over while you're doing your road test of course you have failed the test and the policeman came and is like madam you're driving um past the speed limit and she's like oh she didn't know that she was driving past the speed limit too that she's doing road test and the policeman just said you're doing road test okay i wish you all the best like he didn't even give her tickets <laughs> because he he already knows that of course that person has already failed since the examiner is sitting beside her in the car so that's why you need to calm down at the same time to listen listen to instruction don't just be driving and be going so like i said in my own case the um, examiner was not in the car with me but i think that kind of made me feel a bit more comfortable so they were just they called me on my phone and um i connected i think i connected the phone through bluetooth to my car so when she gives an instruction i would hear through the phone um, through the car speakers and they also inserted um cameras in my car so one camera was facing me and one camera was facing the road like i said if they say something like um make it turn i need to shoulder check and she wouldn't know if i have shoulder checked if she's in the car behind me so that's why the camera in my car was necessary camera facing me and now the camera facing the road is to see whether the road is actually clear before i maybe change lanes or before i go through the lights you know things like that so th that's why it was quite different when i did my but now as it is um the examiners are back in the car so obviously that you may not have that problem so those were just a few um that's just basically how my own test went it was it was not even it's just a 15 minute test it's nothing to you won't even go on the expressway nothing just through the busy area like i said they said the south location is easier because you don't have so many pedestrians on like the downtown location where there's so many people people are going for breakfast people are going for lunch people are coming to work i did my test very early in the morning like around 9 a.m because i thought by that time most people that are going to work would have already been in their offices <laughs> so the road would be somewhat less busy <laughs> so that's when i did my test and you guys i got 100 over 100 <laughs> <laughs> like i was shocked like luma was in fact when i did my proud of her she was like wow that's perfect <laughs> that's perfect congratulations good job so like when i finish the test um they would send the email to me letting me know what my scores was again i got 100 over 100 i was like what me me if anybody knows me I'll, even if me i would not even have believed that that was possible so you see why it's necessary to get an instructor because an instructor knows every route that the examiner can possibly take you through so it's important that you get an instructor now like i said you need to read that book whatever handbook is available you need to read it and understand everything in it you need to do those practice tests on the sgi website you need to understand science you need to understand the rule of the road speed limits every road has speed limits so you have to be like your eyes have to be looking left right front looking out for speed limits if you get to a school zone or playground area you need to know that the speed limit in school zone is 30 so things like that just need to and of course there are school zones in the downtown area so you need to be looking out for signs you need to be looking out for when the light is about to change if you want to make a left turn and let's say you're already at the intersection you have to complete that left turn while the light is still amber once the light turns red and you are still at the intersection or on the other side you have failed because that means that if the light has turned red for you it means it has turned green for the opposite um direction people that are coming in the opposite direction so you need to understand those little little things at a stop sign come to a complete stop before you change lanes you have to signal you have to look at your mirrors look at both mirrors like both side mirrors look at me i, even, I look at everything <laughs> i look at the side mirrors i look at the mirror showing the bag then i also turn my neck your parallel parking has to be on point like on point i i don't know how to say this you can only um i watch videos on youtube too in addition to the instruction that uh, my instructor was giving me or the way he was teaching me i was also watching videos on parallel parking and then i was practicing as well then when i practice i would see come open the door to make sure that um it's one foot away from the cops if you park too close to the curb it's even too slow it's a problem do you know <laughs> if it's like a 50 if the speed limit is 50 and you're doing 30 you're too slow 
so you are causing because you are causing obstructions to people coming behind you're causing traffic so if it's like 50 you can do maybe like a 48 you know a 45 47 just or just do a 50 but if you're doing like 30 that's too slow or if the speed limit is 30 and you don't know that it's cool you're fiery 70 ah. <laughs> Yo, yo. <laughs> so that's basically um, some of the tips that I have um, from today's video and that's how I got my driver's license on the first attempt. I'm so excited eh, because I know that that hurdle and that stage of my life is gone. If you have any questions or if you have anything that you would like for me to give further clarification on, please leave me a comment in the comment section. If you liked my video, please, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are yet to subscribe, please subscribe <laughs> please subscribe please share my video with your friends and family and i will see you in my next video bye